Not going to lie, that last clip took a couple of times to actually nail right, mainly because, well, I am not as good as parkour as I am as making them. But it did demonstrate this contraption quite efficiently. So you saw me run the course, and well, yeah, it's rising lava. And it's really cool. But if you remember from my last video where I talked about high tide, there's one thing about this build that should stand out. This isn't a square. <laughs> and I said that you needed a square in order for this contraption to work. So what gives with that? Another question you might be having is what's up with these colored concrete blocks? Obviously they're different from the rest of them. And we've got different colors as well. And what's that all about? Well my friends, this is rising lava, and this is what it takes to build it. So in today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating this contraption. Well, actually, this is part two of today's video, now that I think about it. Anyway, this contraption, although it is a little bit laggy, and the reason of that is because I have a bit of a junky computer. If you were to build this in your own world on your own computer, that's just like anything better than what I have, then you shouldn't have any issues when it comes to lag. But that's not the point. This is rising lava. It functions. And no, I didn't use like video editing magic or anything to make this actually work. So how did I set this up? Well, I strongly recommend you check out the High Tide video, part one, or maybe you're just coming from here from there. That sounded weird. I'm sorry. Anyway. This thing is massive, and in case you can't tell, it is a giant cube. I said that you needed a cube in order for this contraption to work, and I meant it. So, what I've done here is, I have just created a cube around this entire just random shape, this random swirl. And when I activate this thing, the lava fills in these areas here that aren't a part of the course as well as within the course. What these command blocks down here are doing is they're filling each of these Y layers from that corner to that far corner over there with lava. They are replacing only the air, which is very important, otherwise we're going to end up deleting our course. And of course we have repeaters in between each of them uh, to signify the delay. Now there's a few things I want to note. This line of command blocks here, this one here, and then these chain blocks here. So when running the course, this block here, nothing happens until you step on it. This little piece of black terracotta is connected to this command block. This is the execute command. And it is said to detect, it is to activate when the player steps on the black terracotta, as you can see with this, with these coordinates. And it is set it is told to run the command, so it places a block right here. It's better to get rid of this. Now this command block clears that block, skate, uh, block space. This is what I like to call a button emulator. I showed this in the last video. This is also a button emulator here, this command block. So that starts our line of repeaters, and that sets all our command blocks in motion. Oh, that was weird. Now you notice there are gaps in the redstone. Quite a few of them. There's one there, there's a there, there's another one over there. There's a few. What are those for? Well, that's where all the colored concrete comes in. Each of these colored concrete 
are linked to one of these repeating command blocks. Or, yeah, repeating command blocks. All loaded with the execute command. And these, upon activating, place redstone dust here. Theoretically, the player would get to those positions before the lava engulfed that block space. So, that would place it before the lava actually caught up to it. So, the, like, the signal would be over here. The player would have already placed this down and would be continuing on. This is what I like to call a progress detector. And if you saw my snake block video, you recognize this concept. Again, I'm not in 1.17 right now. So, if you, there are a few designs, and the reason I say 1.17 is because of skulk sensors. You can, these can be easily replaced with skulk sensors. Or I actually, I am actually prototyping a new design for the player detector. So that way you don't have to use like a different colored block. Again, that may be coming out in future video. I still have to do some testing. Now, as of all these chain command blocks, this one clears all the lava from the tube, regardless. So this button has a command block here. All that's doing is placing a redstone block here, right there. That activates this button emulator and activates all these at the same time. What these are doing is just resetting our little progress detector. So they are clearing these gaps right here. What is up with that chunk? That is really weird. So that's what those are doing. And that is, that's basically everything. That's basically what everything is. If I stand on this block, we get some lag spikes. You'll see if I don't stand on that block before the lava catches it, the lava just stops. And the way I did that, well, and that's our progress detector. The reason of that is because the pulse ran out. The pulse stopped here. We didn't hit that block, so the redstone dust didn't get placed there. And thus, the signal stopped, and this allows us to reset the lava. All of these different colored concrete, or not concrete, terracotta, do exactly that. Even these, even this blue one at the end. This one's just to make sure that the player actually has made it to the end. So that's our end player detector. Now you notice these chains. In case you didn't know, the player can actually walk in between the chains, yet they do obstruct the lava. I like to look at the chains. I know you can do it with signs and gates, although I prefer to, I do like, I do like the use of the chains. You can easily just walk right in between them. It does kind of a, prevent a bit of a, a little bit of a challenge, because if you accidentally run into one, you, you just start to panic. <laughs> it's fun. So yeah, that's Rising Lava. Now, you can do this anywhere, with any block space, although, I don't know why, but apparently there is a limit to how many blocks lava or a command block can fill in. So I'm not sure what that value is, but I know it's like pretty large, like several times this amount. So you are, there is a limit to how big you can make a square, but as long as it's a square and you have it from one corner to the other, layer by layer, you should be good. And then once you have those in, once you have the outer walls, you can go ahead and make in some custom walls and get a custom shape like I have here for your very own rising lava course. I will be using this contraption quite frequently and it may or may not be featured in Shiverburn Remastered. Just saying. <laughs> so that's awesome. This isn't exactly a new concept. It's very old, people have done this before in the past, although I think I have come up with quite a simple and efficient design. Well, I say efficient, it, it could use some work. I could get better progress detectors, but again, still working on it. So with that, I've hit 10 minutes, 
and I'm gonna have to close today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, if you're just now checking out some of these contraptions, I do have other videos. Other, that's weird. I do have other videos in regards to command block creations that you should definitely go check out. There will probably be a playlist in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye!